Uh, well, thank you very much, Louise, for that excellent presentation. And it was it's nice to to look at life from an OBE point of view, because we do spend so much of our time in the body. We spend all of our time doing things in the body. And it, it, what Louise says is very, very true. If we can get out of the body, we, we look at things so much, so much more differently. Now my section is going to be on uh, the spiritual side, I suppose you could say. And the goal of life is to evolve. Spiritual evolution, that's really why we're on earth, is to evolve. And every life we go through, every life that we have outside of the body, in the uh, you know, astral body, for example, the other realms, all this is to learn and become better and better and better human beings, uh, become better able to help others, to be closer to that spark of God that's within us. <laughs> And I think most people believe in the concept of everything is one. There's one great source, one great being, one great absolute, one great universe of which we're all part of. And as we evolve, we get closer and closer to the understanding that we are already a part of this great being. And so this is really the whole essence. Each of us has got, has got a spark within us which is attached or part of this absolute. And we're evolving to become a conscious part of that absolute. And so what we're talking about here is in order to evolve effectively and quickly, it's important to understand yourself. And that's where it's important to understand you have different bodies and understand your environment. Because like Louise was saying, there's a lot of things that happen in the environment that affect us that we don't see. It's very simple, it's simple to explain it. As Louise was talking about your thoughts and your actions. It's a tremendous effect on you, what you think and what you do. Obviously, it, affect, it affects you very, very much and affects those around you. Also, your past karma. What you've done as a, as a person uh, in a past life, what, you, what you've thought, your actions, that too will come back and will affect you in this life and will very likely affect others in this life. And the environment. There's so much that goes on in the environment. As Louise was talking about, there's other entities that have passed away before. There are uh, thought forms that you create. There's energies that you are constantly thinking about that go into different uh, walls and chairs and, and clothes. So there's so much that's going on all around you, not to mention all the people all the physical people that you have interactions with. As they think it comes to you, as you think it goes to them, it's all a big swirl. It's a tremendously complex interchange of energies between you and everyone else and everything else. It affects you in your aura. And you can, you can kind of break down the aura in three main categories. I think Louise mentioned the uh, the etheric body, where, where your chakras are in. There's the astral body, which you also touched upon. That's kind of more of your emotional, emo emotional makeup, your emotional body. Then there's the mental body. And so as you think and as others think, it will tend to hit and affect your mental body. Uh, as, you, uh, as you emote or as you feel others' emotions, it will affect your astral body. And it, it's, you, you pick these things up. And if it hits you, if it's on your aura, it can also easily seep down into your physical structure. Okay, you can think of it as a mirror. Uh, spiritual healing, for example, is a method of healing your physical body via your aura. So in other words, you'll have things that, that get attached to your aura, either emotions or thoughts or whatnot, and if you can clear them up through spiritual healing, that will then reflect that health will then reflect on the physical body as well. So how do you then improve your evolution? How do you avoid this interference that, that's all around us? How do you deal with it? 
And the step one is to take care of your own body, take care of your vibration. As uh, Louise mentioned, that you're kind of attracted to people of like vibration. So if, you, if your vibration is low, then it's going to be easier for a, a lower vibration to stay on your aura, as it were. It's going, to, it's going to be more easily, it's going to affect you more easily. So step one is to keep your vibration up. Keep it um, higher. And there's simple ways of doing that. Uh, giving service to others, being more, more, uh, more interested in other people's livelihoods, caring for others, um, sending prayers, um, positive thinking, uh, spiritual study. If you study uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita or uh, um, the I Ching or any a number of, of, of good books, Buddhist books, etc., this will, this will raise your vibration. And the reason it raises your vibration is because it, ra it changes your thought. As you're, as you're reading evolved thoughts, that will raise your thoughts, because you'll be thinking about these more evolved things, these more evolved concepts, and that will raise up your vibration, will heighten your vibration. And also, those who you are around is a tremendous uh, effect on you. If you're around people that are very upset or very ill or very angry, that will tend to lower your vibration. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't go around people. Well, let, let's say you might want to go to a hospital and help people. That's a good thing. You want to do that. You want to help people. You want to share your good vibrations. And you might say, well, how can you, how can you do both? And the point is, if, you, if you're going into a situation which you know is a lower vibration situation, let's face it, a hospital has to be, but you're going there to help others, then that's a good thing. But be aware that you have to then recharge yourself. You're going to this hospital, you're going to be sharing some of your good vibration, your good energy, and that's a good thing, but just be aware of that so when you go back home, do something, have some kind of a practice, some kind of a, uh, an antidote that will raise your vibrations back up, that will fill you back up. And then that, that will, that's a good thing, of course. Now here, here as, uh, as Louise was talking about the, um, the clerk at the post office, we, we often do have arguments. And the step two is other people's influences on you. And of course, they will have an influence on you. If you upset people, that will have an influence on you. That energy will come to you. If you disappoint someone, that disappointment, that emotion will come to you. If you have an argument, of course, it's going to come right away. And obviously, you, you can't go and do everything that everyone else wants you to. And likewise, everyone else is not going to do what you want them to. It's just not life. And so obviously you, you can't, you can't you know, be an absolute people pleaser all the time, of course. But you cannot go, not go out of your way to create arguments. You cannot go out of your way to create upset. You can be clear with people so that they understand what you are going to do and what you're not going to do. So they aren't disappointed in a surprising way, shall we say. And if you do have to disappoint someone, or if you, do, if you can't avoid an argument, if you can't avoid something like this, then just be aware of it. And why not send that person who you've upset, or you've had an argument with, send them some healing. Go out of your way to send them some positive energy, some loving energy, some uplifting energy. And that will help them because they're going to be upset because of the argument. And it'll help you because if they are less upset, then they'll be sending less energy back towards you. And it's something that's a very simple thing to do, and, but, and it's a very essential thing to do. And if you want to protect your vibration, which is, again, what you want to do.